Japan's bullet train or Shinkansen system is one of mankind's modern technological marvels. In its over 50 years of operation, the Shinkansen has transported over 10 billion passengers, more than the total population of Earth, at speeds exceeding 200 miles an hour for some trains. In the most earthquake-prone country on the planet, one would expect the worst to happen. But of all those billions of passengers, there have been zero passenger fatalities in operation. It's a safe, efficient, and convenient system. And we mean convenient. On this episode of the American Rail Club, we're taking the world's ultimate train from Tokyo to Osaka and back, taking a day journey while exploring the history of the Shinkansen and its possibilities around the world and in America. Welcome aboard, pick a seat, and enjoy the ride. It's early in the morning on our trip to Japan, and we're taking the day to go from our hotel in Tokyo to Osaka. We'll be taking the 7.54 AM Nozomi Express Shinkansen from Shinagawa Station to arrive at Shin Osaka by 10.20 AM. From there, we'll go to Universal Studios Japan for the morning and afternoon, and then to Dotonbori at night, where we will then return back afterwards on the 9.10 p.m. Nozomi to arrive at Tokyo by 11.35 p.m. Pretty full day. None of us ever had a packed travel day like this by train, especially between two major cities separated by over 320 miles. Something like this would only be possible by bullet train, and it's time to start getting to the station. But first, let's pick up something to eat. Grabbing some breakfast over in Kamata was quick and inexpensive, and the food in Japan is pretty tasty and healthier than my guilty pleasure of two bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddles. And so we start out our morning. Let's do this. You can see how everything is packed. I got my hashi here, and I have a, even a cleaning towel, everything too. That's something you don't see back at home. Afterwards, time to take the Keihin Tohoku up to Shinagawa Station with our Shinkansen tickets already bought the day before. Then it's on to the platform of the backbone of Japan's infrastructural engine, the Shinkansen. When I mean this system is punctual, it redefines it entirely. The clockwork of seeing this amazing system in action is awe-inspiring to anyone, even if they aren't interested in trains. The engineering, the speed, the timing, the safety, and the people behind it. All of this make it what it is. Finally, after years of talking about it, we're finally here. The one that showed it all. It's kind of surreal, but it's like, wow. Pretty much everything worked and I was supposed to do. I mean, we saw a train that was supposed to leave for 7.40, it arrived at 7.39. So everything is super punctual, just the way I like it. Let's get our seats on board, settle in, and discuss it more in depth on board. But not too much as we'll only be here for 2 hours and 20 minutes to cover 320 miles. But first, breakfast. This is where it's at right here. The development of the Shinkansen, literally translated as New Trunk Line, was long in the making. In 1903, Germany tested the first electric multiple unit train that reached a record 130 miles an hour. 
Compared to regular locomotives which lead the passenger cars to either push or pull a train, electric multiple units or EMUs are a different layout where motors are distributed along the entire train to increase efficiency. For 1903, however, technology hadn't quite figured out how to sync all the motors to not resist and limit each other, but a standing impression would be made on a young engineer of the Japanese Railway Bureau sent to observe the test, Yasujiro Shima. He had a dream to create Japan's first bullet train, or Danganresha, connecting Tokyo all through Shimonoseki, the western end of Japan's main island, Honshu. Plans were actually made and worked for the Danganresha project in 1939. Instead of using electricity, however, it would be steam. But those plans bombed after something called World War II, which devastated Japan's infrastructure and burned down a majority of Tokyo in the single most destructive and deadly bombing attack in human history. Japan, adhering to the principles of fall down seven times, get up eight, had a chance to reinvent itself and three major factors would do it. Number one, its decision to electrify its major railways gained through the sovereignty of the San Francisco Treaty. Japan was under immense pressure by the United States and General MacArthur to adopt diesel engines due to the austerity measures and the dependency it would create on Japan to outside sources of fuel, mainly Americas. But thankfully, it dodged that stinky bullet. Number two, the Japanese National Railways, or JNR, had this man as its president, Shinji Sogo. Under his leadership, JNR would be able to make bold decisions to grow its services. Then there was the Dai Sansei Ryoku, or big factor number three, the chief engineer at JNR, Hideo Shima. Remember Yasujiro Shima earlier who witnessed the record test in Germany? Hideo is his son, or Musuko. Okay, I'll try to cut back on the Japanese learning, there is no quiz after this. In the 1950s, JNR was struggling to keep up with the demand of population and economic growth and proposed two plans of building new narrow gauge lines along its Tokaido corridor between Tokyo and Osaka. But Shinji and Hideo had a third impact. Plan, I mean, I meant plan. This plan would build a new larger standard gauge passenger rail network segregated away from freight and slower passenger trains, achieve speeds in excess of 130 miles per hour as well as follow much of the previous bullet train plan from 1939, except this time using electric multiple units. The 2,500 meter turning radius for corner standard on modern Shinkansen lines, that was actually carried over from the 1939 plan. The plans were approved in 1958 with engineering quickly commencing and construction beginning in 1959 to connect Tokyo to Osaka. This Shinkansen plan, or new trunk line after the standard gauge designation, also brought along the ridicule, moaning and hysteria from other superiors in JNR, the Japanese government and the media. All throughout the planning and construction, Shima and Sogo were deemed madmen for sticking to trains in a coming age of automobiles and airplanes. Words that would probably make the best humble pie with Mince Crow later. The Shinkansen was massively expensive, with a budget of 1.6 billion US dollars in that year, which doubled to an actual of 3.2 billion US dollars. From 1963 to 2018 dollars, that's nearly 26 billion dollars. Even including all new engineering, research, design, and manufacturing, it's still more than half the cost per mile of California's now $100 billion project. But because of these cost overruns and out of respect, both Sogo, followed by Shima, resigned from JNR before ultimately the fruits of theirs and thousands of others' labors were realized on October 1st, 1964, right on time for the Tokyo Olympics the era of high-speed rail had begun. Since the Shinkansen's opening, JNR had run into a lot of cost problems, but contrary to popular belief, this wasn't actually created because of debt acquired from the Shinkansen project itself. Quite the contrary, actually. It paid in spades and it was subsidizing the two biggest losses for JNR, forced construction of commuter railways in sparse urban areas and government constraints on fare increases with inflation. 
The change came when JNR was eventually split regionally into private companies rather than a public government corporation in 1987. These new Japan Rail or JR companies brought the much needed technological improvements, especially to rail service like the Shinkansen, which stayed with the initial Zero Series Hikari for nearly 20 years after introduction. In 1987, the year of breakup and privatization, the 100 series Shinkansen ran at 137 mile an hour top speed. Top speed by 1992 was increased to 170 miles an hour by the series 300. By 2000, the series 500 could reach 186 miles an hour. And today, an E5 Shinkansen can reach 200 miles an hour. Hooray for capitalism! The amazing history behind the Shinkansen is the reason why Japan and its visitors are able to enjoy the comforts it affords today. The seating on board is rather comfy in the reserved class, with plenty of space to stretch out, eat on tables and put your luggage on top, without worrying about running out of space and checking it in. The bathrooms are pristine, have actual functioning sinks, push button operation, and size properly for actual human beings not goblins like on Amtrak. Japanese etiquette suggests for you to stay quiet at a conversational level in the cars, and if you need a good walking stretch or talk on the cell phone, there's the in-between cars that have cell phones, smoking areas, and bathrooms. The rails on which the bullet trains ride upon are as smooth as a silk kimono. Every night of every day, a crew of about 3,000 across the network perform maintenance and needed repairs on a track that takes close to 370 trains per day. There is even a dedicated inspection train equipped with gear like laser measuring equipment called Dr. Yellow, which is quite a rare sight. But hey, with my luck, I snapped a picture of one in Ginza. Then there's the punctuality of the entire network which I previously talked about. The average delay, if there even is a delay for this Shinkansen, is a scant 30 seconds thanks to the teamwork of everyone and the skill of the conductors. I'm sure you've seen the videos of cleaning crews that clean these trains that seat 1,200 plus people in only 7 minutes flat. I didn't get a chance to see them, but their work obviously shows as everything is clean. Whisking through over the rural parts of Japan, cities, tunnels, and mountains, it becomes clear how amazing these trains really are, and how it has enabled Japan's economy to reach the level it has. We were already getting close when we looked back at our watches and realized how quick 2 hours and 300 miles had gone. Nobody was cramped, and we were all relaxed. At exactly 10.19, we were at the station, and we felt cheated out of our early minute. So we stayed here gawking at the bullet trains for a bit more. And another geek out. By the way, these shirts? You can get them on the ARC Teespring and more goodies. Back to scheduled programming. The amount of time the bullet train has given us to enjoy another part of the country was time well spent. That is an absolute violation of the function of the station. From Shinosaka, we were able to easily and quickly board a train to Osaka Station, then transfer on Nishikujo to head for Universal City Station to Universal Studios Japan. It's almost as if somebody stopped time and were able to arrive here with ease and get to basically the reason why we came to Japan in the first place. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, The Ride. 
Yare, yare After we did all we wanted there, we had enough time to take a train over to Osaka's famous Dotonbori district. Osaka is known for its culinary culture, frequently called the kitchen of Japan. There's even a saying in Japan that goes, Kyoto no kidaore, Osaka no kuidaore, meaning one dresses into decadence in Kyoto and one eats into decadence in Osaka. Thus, the Japanese term kuidaore, or to overindulge yourself in food. Indeed, the food in Osaka is amazing, although I think Osakans are confused with how hamburgers are used. My Japanese people, why was I told that all Konawana? But apart from cuisine, the sights and lights of Osaka are enough to feed the eyes and the senses. Which reminds me of the old Cuban saying of barriga llena, corazón contento, or belly full and heart content. And with our heart content and legs exhausted, it was time to get ourselves back to Tokyo before midnight on the last train home. Upon the platform itself, we were able to get ourselves some Japanese snacks and alcohol to add eyes bleary to the ailments. Incredible how convenient it is to have a convenience store right on the platform. It just works. On the way back, I thought about the immense amount of possibilities a system like this would bring to the US. Much of the world including France, Germany, China, Taiwan, Italy, Spain, and even Morocco now have high speed rail systems, while America has dug itself in a dark hole of automobile and airline dependency. The same hole that Japan avoided nearly 50 years ago thanks to the brave and innovative men that pioneered the Shinkansen. The journey we took on the Shinkansen by car would take over 6 hours, and 8 by bus. That's already half the day gone. Sure, planes once they're in the air can go pretty fast, but accounting for flight time, plus security check, plus boarding, disembarking, and traveling to and from the airport, and your one and a half hour flights turn to about 3 or 4 hours of total travel time. There's a reason why the Shinkansen rules an outright majority of share in travel between these two cities. For starting at around $95 for the slower service to $130 for the express one way, marginally cheaper bus tickets and fluctuating airline tickets around the same prices with fees don't seem to be a good deal, and one ride on the Shinkansen can tell why the competition is scared around the world. There's actually hope for the system to come to the US through the Texas Central Railway Company, coincidentally being done with the assistance of JR Central, the same company that runs the Tokaido Shinkansen we took. If you want to learn a little bit more information about that, you can click this video over here, although we'll be coming out with more information on it pretty soon, and it will be linked over here. Japan isn't done yet. Improvements to speed on the current system are currently being tested with the new Alpha X experimental train, capable of over 225 miles per hour. Then there's the great leap forward with what we dub the Hyperloop killer that actually exists, the SC Maglev. This train has been breaking record after record, with the latest one in 2015 at 375 miles an hour with more to go. The test line in Yamanashi will be open to the public come the 2020 Olympics around the corner, 
rhyming with history just as Japan unveiled its first Shinkansen in 1964. Maybe someday the US will be able to realize the benefits of rail and we too can raise the ceiling of what is possible within our country. Whether it's an easy day trip to a city 300 miles away, facilitating jobs in the new economy, or bringing family together. The passenger train has an important place in a nation's modern infrastructure. Japan has proved that for itself and the rest of the world. It's amazing that more than 10 billion passengers, including myself and my friends, have journeyed on this amazing work of human wonder and engineering with no fatalities, making it probably the safest place to be in the world. On top of unheard of punctuality, spectacular speed, and surplus comfort, it's an experience and adventure that you too can have and hope to get a chance to hop on board, whether it's in Japan, Europe, or in the near future in America. Thank you for watching this video on American Rail Club. If you want more rail news on transit infrastructure and high speed rail in America and around the world, be sure to subscribe and pull that bell. Share this video with friends interested in trains or planning a trip to Japan. It's no cost and everyone is welcome aboard. Want to support ARC further? Upgrade your ticket to ride by supporting us on Patreon where just a dollar will get you access to exclusive videos and behind the scenes before the general public. Thank you for writing. Next stop, the future.